This question introduces two more concepts on top of Ohm's law. First of all, we talk about power. So again, we start with the answer and work backwards. Power is actually given by voltage times current. And you can see why that is, because just looking at the units, you have joules per coulomb here. So that's how much energy you're giving to every charge. And then the current is how much charge moves every second, which gives you joules per second, which is a watt. So not too surprising there. We're fortunately given current in this case, which is exactly 100 amps, but we still need voltage. How do we get voltage? Well, that's from Ohm's law. I times R, but we don't have R being the resistance. What we have here is we know that we have a copper wire that's one kilometer long, which is a thousand meters. And that has a diameter of that much. So the radius converting it into meters as well. So divide by a thousand and divide by two. We have that much meter for the radius. And if we apply a certain voltage across it, then we know how much current flows through it. So we can use that to figure out my voltage. But we need this resistance. Now this resistance, given that we have a solid copper wire, we have a further expression that we have dealt with a little bit in the labs. Just like a water pipe, you would imagine the wider the pipe is, the easier it is for the charge to flow through. That's why we put this cross-sectional area underneath. And in this case, that's pi r squared. But then the longer it is, the harder it is for the electrons to flow through it all. So it'll increase your resistance. Then whatever is left, it's a property of the material. So depending if you have a copper wire in this case or a silver wire, you will have different amounts of resistance based on the material itself. And that's what we call resistivity. These very similar to say something like density is just data that you can look up. And in fact, we can look up the resistivity uh, in your textbook. In table 20.1, you have all the resistivities for all the various material. In this case, we want copper. And you see that very few things are much better conductors in terms of sizes than copper. Silver is slightly better, and then it just goes down from there. But silver is quite a bit more expensive, so we usually use copper for our electrical conductors especially in this case where we are transmitting lots of power over great distances. The units for resistivity is ohms times meters because you have meters on top and meters square underneath. And then we basically have everything now. The resistance is my rho times L over A. So we have 1.72, so on and so forth, times my thousand meters. Notice I'm using everything in meters to keep have the right unit, all squared. The units, as you can see, will work out. We get ohms left and we get 0 0.255. Lots of digits, we're not done yet. We still have more calculations to do, but that's what the resistance is. E even over a kilometer wire, that's why copper is so good. Then from that, we can work out my voltage, which is IR. Just going to convert, change that into 100 amps. So a little bit of voltage drop. And then finally, we can work out my answer, which is my power, by multiplying the voltage here by another 100. So it's going to be 25.5.0.6, blah, 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 watts, which in terms of sig figs, it should be that or 2.55 kilowatts, which is about the power used by roughly say two microwave ovens because microwave ovens are rated a thousand watts roughly, but that's over a kilometer of wire. 
which is quite fascinating in how efficient it is in transporting our energy.